Hello and welcome to Cricket Happenings, dear friends and subscribers. On this part, part of the cricket show, it's the third day's play in the second test match between Australia and Pakistan, where yesterday Pakistan definitely had the upper hand, but today uh, they they probably uh, are have given us they have got, given Australia a chase of 538 runs for victory with two days still to go out of which 47 runs have been cleared by Australia for the loss of one wicket and it was another eventful day and we also had a bizarre run out uh, which happened of uh, uh, with the, with, the, uh, with Azhar Ali and Asad Shafiq uh, chatting at mid pitch when the run out happened so I'll be talking about that so uh, so basically uh, the, the Pakistan declared at the 400 for uh, 9 declared and then uh, they set a target of 538 for the Aussies and, uh, and Babar Azam missing up his uh, maiden test century once again as uh, it's been quite some time that Babar Azam uh, has been trying to make his mark in test matches but unfortunately he was out for 99 today and Sarfraz um, Ahmed continued his uh, first innings form uh, to make uh, 81 runs so I'll be talking about all that and then we'll also look at uh, keeping the topic on Pakistan uh, Pakistan actually Mohamed Amir who has already been um, has lost um, uh, favor with uh, Pakistan right now as you know he's not a part of the scheme of things right now and he has also been dropped for the T20s as well the three T20 uh, match series which is coming up between Australia and Pakistan and we'll have a look at some other cricket news but let's uh, dive into the uh, third day's play which is the most exciting uh, test match which is happening uh, it's the third day's play in the second test match between Australia and Pakistan and uh, let's have a look uh, as to what really uh, uh, what really uh, panned out uh, at the uh, in this uh, particular uh, match between uh, between Pakistan and Australia and as I said Today, uh, Pakistan resuming uh, on their um, uh, overnight score, uh, which was uh, they had lost two wickets, as you would remember. They were 20 for two, uh, as you would remember. And now we will have the story of the day here. Uh, they were not 20 for two. In fact, uh, they, 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 had, uh, uh, they had lost. Um, uh, Fakhar Zaman uh, was uh, into the pavilion uh, for uh, 66 runs, which I talked about yesterday. And Azhar Ali and Harris Sohail were at the crease today. Azhar Ali and Harris Sohail uh, carried on uh, in the same fashion. Azhar Ali was um, definitely uh, doing what he was doing best the other day, and things were going on. Uh, and Harris Sohail was the first wicket to go, as uh, Harris Sohail uh, was a victim of the balling of Nathan Lyon. Uh, Nathan Lyon gave them an, uh, a breakthrough, uh, a very quick breakthrough on the on the third day uh, when it was uh, very well balled by Nathan Lyon uh, he forced uh, Harris Sohail to jump down the track uh, to have a go at him uh, it was a ball which was flighted but a bit slower in the air uh, and Harris never got to the pitch of the ball the ball spun away Payne had a Payne had to complete the stumping Payne was the one who stumped him and Harris Sohail was gone stump Payne bowl Lyon for 17 uh, score at 154 for 3 uh, but Pakistan had nothing to worry because uh, they were sit, still doing very well. As Babar Azam and Asad Shafiq, uh, no, no, uh, in fact, Asad Shafiq came in uh, to join uh, Azhar Ali. Now, uh, and, uh, and Babar Azam came in and Babar Azam was, uh, and, and, and there was only six runs added uh, after the dismissal of Faris Sohail. Now, listen to this. This was the most eventful uh, happening uh, on the third day and look at what happened now this was this is something a very comical run out according to me because uh, it was it probably one would have never seen this uh, in international cricket probably and definitely uh, both uh, Azhar Ali and Ashad Safiq were both guilty of that run out uh, which really cost uh, it did not cost uh, Pakistan a lot but uh, definitely uh, this was not the way to do it in fact, um, the, uh, just uh, describing you this bizarre run out that happened between Azhar Ali and Asad Shafiq. Uh, actually, Azhar Ali was on strike. Mitchell Stark was the bowler. He edged the ball past the gully uh, and the ball actually stopped before the boundary line. And Azhar Ali 
uh, and Azhar Ali and Asad Shafiq were thinking that the ball had already gone to the boundary and they, they decided to have a mid-pitch conversation uh, without noticing where the ball was. Now, Mitchell Stark had already chased the ball because, as I said, the ball stopped just inches inside the boundary line. Uh, Mitchell Stark picked up the ball and relayed it to Tim Payne and Tim Payne knew that this was an opportunity because uh, Azhar, Azhar Ali and Asad Shafi were definitely having a lot of a really mid-pitch chat with each other and they were under the impression that the ball had already gone for the boundary and they really got a shock of their um, uh, the, the shock of the day here as uh, Tim Payne actually whipped out the bales to, uh, and as I said the ball was in play so basically it was a clear decision that Azhar Ali had to go and what a silly dismissal here uh, with uh, both the batsmen not watching the ball assuming that it has gone for a boundary and it ended it, uh, ended Azhar's innings and Azhar Ali it was a big wicket he was gone run out for 64 with four boundaries and this is a lesson for every uh, player that you have to keep an eye on the ball uh, because uh, the ball is still not dead if it had gone onto the boundary one could understand that the ball was dead but uh, the ball had stopped inches inside the boundary and the batsmen were having a mid mid pitch chat between each other and what a silly run out to have so after that um, Asad Shafiq was there uh, along with Babar Azam Asad Shafiq uh, probably felt a bit guilty that um, had his son, that um, Azhar Ali was run out so Asad Shafiq decided to rein himself in and Babar Azam uh, was simply superb he was playing some and as you know he is a very good eye player Babar Azam and he started uh, stroking balls exquisitely uh, through the onside or through the offside and uh, and especially uh, the way he was placing the ball past the point region was a treat to watch as both Asad Shafiq and Babar Azam uh, strode further they started taking the uh, Pakistan innings further uh, before Asad Shafiq uh, after that uh, dismissal that happened against Azhar Ali finally was out when the Pakistan score was 235 Asad Shafiq was caught by Ashton Agar, the substitute of the bowling of Labushan uh, for 44. And Labushan never, uh, never fails to take a wicket every time he has been given the ball. And that is something that Australia will be very happy about. And now this was Asad Shafiq caught at backward point. This was a ball which was short and wide. Uh, and Asad Shafiq trying to cut the ball. The ball was in the air. And backward point, Ashton Agar took a good catch. And Asad Shafiq was gone. Now, Babar Azam was joined in by Safraz Ahmed, the captain, 235. But Pakistan had nothing to worry. The, the, the cushion of 137 runs along with the 235 was really making the score look very big. Uh, as uh, Babar Azam, uh, who was playing very well, was joined in by Safraz Ahmed. Safraz Ahmed, uh, this time, uh, compared to what he did in the first innings, uh, decided to play a sort of a really sedate role, but made sure that he was there at the wicket along with Babar Azam and uh, things were going on uh, from 235 for 5 uh, there was another very good partnership that happened uh, between Babar Azam uh, and Safraz Ahmed which took the score uh, with a very good partnership which, uh, which yielded 133 runs uh, to, to for, the, for, the, for the sixth wicket and things were going on well and Babar Azam was just inching towards his century. He was 99 uh, not out at that stage. And uh, one would have probably been very happy to see uh, Babar Azam after a long time, trying to, every time trying to get, he has been dismissed in the 90s as well. And one was really looking forward to Babar Azam getting his maiden test century and look at what happened. Mitchell Marsh was the bowler. Uh, the ball actually um, uh, uh, tailed back uh, into the middle stump, uh, it actually it was an, it was coming on an angle, uh, and the ball was tailing back, um, and uh, uh, Babar Azam was rooted to the crease. It was hit above the knee roll, uh, and it was reviewed, but the ball tracking came up saying that the ball would have hit the leg stump, and uh, what a what a I mean, uh, one felt so sorry for Babar Azam that once again he has missed his century and his maiden century has been eluding him time and again now for Babar Azam and really felt sorry for Babar Azam but Babar Azam had to leave as he was out LBW 
Bohol Mitchell man up for 99, which included six fours and three sixes. And uh, what, what an innings from Babar Azam. Uh, a, a beautifully crafted innings. And it was a real shame that Babar Azam could not make his maiden test century. Uh, well, Babar Azam, very, very unlucky, I thought. But he had to go. Uh, as Sarfraz Ahmed, then after that, it was left to Sarfraz Ahmed to uh, really, um, you know, uh, stage the crusade. Uh, as Bilal Asif, uh, Nathan Lyon was brought back and Nathan Lyon uh, picked up two wickets uh, by uh, getting rid of uh, Bilal Asif for 15 uh, of, with 1-4 one and 1-6 one and Yasir Shah was out for a solitary boundary, LBW on Nathan Lyon and now uh, the score uh, for Pakistan was 394. Uh, Safran Ahmed uh, was, um, uh, was LBW Bowl Labushan uh, for 81. Um, uh, he, he, this was a ball which was uh, full um, it was full on the uh, middle stump actually uh, and uh, Safraz Ahmed uh, could not um, place back the ball and that ended it uh, ended up uh, in um, the ball hitting his pads and there was a big appeal uh, and that was then Safraz uh, reviewed it but uh, it was of no avail as uh, the ball tracking said uh, the ball uh, would have uh, hit the off stump and Labushan had once again taken another big wicket with Sarfraz Ahmed gone every double ball Labushan for 81 5 fours and 1 6 a very good knock under the circumstances by Sarfraz Ahmed and, uh, and then finally uh, he applied the declaration when the magical score of 400 was reached by uh, Pakistan with Mohammad Abbas and Mir Hamza not out or not respectively and 400 for 9 thus setting the Aussies a target of 538 runs for victory and with two full days to go uh, it was a very good challenging declaration it was a very good declaration now the bowling I would like to say Nathan Lyon 43 overs 8 maidens 135 runs and 4 wickets 2 for 74 for Lebushan as I said every time he has been given the ball he has struck now what uh, Australia would be looking forward from um, M Lebushan is very simple they just want him to get runs under his belt uh, and so it will be interesting to see because he's a part-time spinner but he's a mainstream batsman so one would like to see Labushan uh, get into his groove uh, probably in the second innings uh, well for Australia so they were set a target of 538 runs for victory and uh, uh, and for um, uh, Pakistan they had immediate joy as with the with, with the openers Aaron Finch and Sean Marsh Sean Marsh, in fact, uh, they, they changed the uh, plot a bit with 538 runs to get for victory. Um, um, Australia decided to uh, do some experiment. Usman Khwaja uh, probably was having a, a sort of a problem with his knee. So they decided to send Sean Marsh to open the innings. But, that, that, uh, but it did not prove fruitful at all. As Sean Marsh uh, was, uh, was, uh, was bowled by a beautiful delivery. Uh, from the test debutant Mir Hamza who got his maiden test wicket the left arm seamer and let's look at what happened now this was a ball this was an absolute jaffa as we call it in cricket uh, this was um, uh, this was um, uh, this was a ball uh, which was angling in towards the off stamp uh, it, it pitched and just uh, you know just went away a shade uh, of the seam uh, and um, Sean Marsh as uh, outside edge was totally beaten as he tried to defend at the ball and the ball went on to clip the top of the off stump what a sensational piece of bowling from this youngster left arm uh, pace bowling youngster who was hunting for his maiden test wicket and that it came in the form of Sean Marsh being clean bowled by Mir Hamza for four uh, so that was the that was wicket number one and after that uh, Travis said came in and Aaron Finch uh, saw to it that Australia went to safety uh, at stumps uh, on day three with the score uh, on 47 for one Aaron Finch was not out on 24 with two boundaries Travis said was not out on 17 with two boundaries and there is a big battle for the Aussies uh, because as I said but uh, Australia have all the time in the world but uh, it, uh, the uh, if, you, if you remember the first test match where Aussies drew the match uh, it was only one day that they had to really uh, eke out but now uh, it's a matter of, of surviving for two days and that is something which is definitely not on the cards 
so and uh, if at all australia win it would be the uh, it would be the one of the uh, best wins in international cricket would have really to really create a record but one knows for a fact that uh, one can clearly say that pakistan are favorites to win this uh, second test match so uh, that's the match situation then uh, mir hamza has got his maiden test wicket three overs no maiden one for 19 bowled superbly Mohammad Abbas, 4 overs, none for 15, 3 overs for 6, Yasir Shah, Bilal Asif, 2 overs, one minute, none for 5. And with the, the pitch and with the going into the fourth day when he's expecting the ball to really turn and I think Australia uh, wouldn't be able to repeat what they did in the first test match where they had a match-saving draw because this is a, a quite a different situation than what it was. So I can clearly state that uh, Pakistan are clear favourites uh, to win this uh, second test match against Australia. Well, now um, now from here, uh, I'm I'm just going to just give you news that Mohammad Amir, uh, who has already lost favour with the Pakistan selectors after his poor showing, uh, has also not been uh, selected uh, for the three-match T20 series, which is coming up uh, between Pakistan and Australia, with the first of the matches uh, coming up on uh, 24th of October, I reckon. Uh, it's a three-match series, three-match T20 series, which is coming up. Imad Wazim, uh, the left-arm spinning all-rounder, uh, has been who, who could not take uh, take part in the Asia Cup due to injury, has come back. They also included a rookie by the name Wakas Maksud. Now he's 30 years of age. He's a left-arm seamer, and uh, I'm told that he has done very well for the Pakistan A team, and that's the precise reason uh, he has got the nod. Uh, and other than that, the team T20 squad, Fakhar Zaman, Mohammad Afiz, Saib Zada, Farhan, uh, another newcomer who has definitely played a few T20s, Babar Azam, Shoaib Malik, Asif Ali, another talented player, Hussain Talat, um, is another one, Sarfraz Ahmed, Captain Dussard, Sharaf Khan, Shine Afridi, Usman Khan, Hassan Ali, Imad Wazim, Wakas Maksud, the left arm, 30 year old left arm seamer uh, from Pakistan, and Fahi, Mashraf, another uh, genuine all rounder. So this is the team composition. Well, dear fans, friends and subscribers, uh, I'm trying to see whether there's any cricket news that I need to really talk about. Uh, and I will be winding up my uh, cricket show uh, shortly. So uh, let's, um, uh, let's have a look at any other news that we have. Yes, Martin Guptil, uh, who has been ruled out uh, of the Pakistan series uh, with a calf injury. So that's another news. And one more news that I would like to share and this is from Pakistan, Danish Kanadia uh, has uh, himself um, um, admitted that he was guilty of uh, match fixing. Um, uh, uh, so, yes, him, himself um, uh, pleaded guilty. Now, this was in the English County uh, Cricket League, as you would remember, uh, there was a particular incident. So, um, um, Mohammed uh, Danish Kanadia, the leg spinner, uh, has come up clean and said that uh, he was definitely guilty of spot, uh, uh, spot fixing or match fixing, whatever you call it, uh, which was very sad, which happened in the English uh, County Cricket League, in my opinion. Uh, well, dear fans and subscribers, and that was long back, but he has uh, come here uh, to admit his guilt. Uh, well, dear fans and subscribers, uh, as I said, tomorrow uh, it's, a, it's a big day uh, in the match between Australia and Pakistan, which will definitely determine the outcome of this match which, as I said, Pakistan are looking clear favourites uh, at this particular stage. Uh, unless Australia can really put up a miraculous draw, surviving two days of this test match, uh, which uh, to me uh, sounds, um, you know, which to me uh, looks like uh, it's a very, very Herculean task to do so. Well, dear fans and subscribers, it's about time for me to bid you all a very good night on this cricket show by promising you that you'll be seeing me once again uh, with the four days play proceedings between Pakistan and Australia on my next cricket show. Until then, good night.